In this video, I'm going to talk about weak interactions. This is when two particles interact using the weak force. Please read the success criteria for this video of what I plan to cover. So let's start off talking about what is a weak interaction. So first of all, this is only going to occur between nucleons. Okay, so that means this force or this interaction is between different kinds of quarks or different kinds of leptons. And if you don't know what those are, you need to go back and do some bit of review on some of the particle physics first. In order for two particles to interact, remember, they need to exchange a particle, a boson. So in this case, if it's going to be the weak interaction, I need a very specific kind of exchange particle. And that's going to be either a W plus, a W minus, or a Z boson. And I'll show you how we can determine which one that's going to be. It's going to be the only kind of interaction that will allow a charge change to take place. And that's going to help us determine which of the bosons to use. Another key feature about this is it's only acting over a very short range. Unlike the gravitational fields or the electromagnetic interactions, those can go on for basically infinity. But the weak interaction and the strong interaction are very short range. Now you can see my bottom line here. Gravitation is less than the weak force, which is less than the electromagnetic force, which is less than the strong force. In our data booklet, it's nicely written like this, in order. So a lot of people confuse this. They think the weak force is going to be the weakest, but the gravitational force is much weaker by far than the weak force. Just remember your data booklet is there to help you out. So they've actually put it in order for you. So there's a few indications that should give you a clue that a weak interaction is going on. One of the easiest things to look for is does the quark change flavor? And by that I mean does it change its type? For example, in a beta decay, we have a neutron turning into a proton, but when you go down on the quark level, we have an up quark turning to a down quark, or it could be a down to the up, depending if we're talking about a beta positive or a beta minus. It's also because of that, we might have an up quark turn into a strange quark, for example. And that means the strangeness would not be conserved because only a strange particle has a strangeness value. Everything else has a strangeness value of zero. It's one of the few times your physics teacher is not going to complain if something's not conserved. I've already mentioned if in order to conserve charge it needs to be with a charge on our boson, the only one that can do that is our weak interaction. And finally, Another indicator that a weak interaction has taken place is if we have a neutrino produced. So I already mentioned the idea that the beta minus decay involves a weak interaction. So I've got one here written down, a neutron turning into a proton. This is a beta minus decay, and it also makes for us an antineutrino. So let's think about this in more detail. My neutron, that is an up, down, down turning into a proton, that is an up, up, down. Okay, so up and down, up and down. What has really happened? A down quark has turned into an up quark in order for this to occur. The only way that can happen is if we had a weak interaction. Now I actually find this a little easier if I draw the Feynman diagram that goes with this. So we have a down quark, turning into an up quark. These are both real particles, so we have arrows going to the right. I am using time horizontally here. And in order to do this, a boson has to be given off, and I use a wavy line for that. Here's my new vertex, and I'm going to get a beta minus, a real particle, also created an antiparticle, so my arrow is reversed. And this is my Feynman diagram. Now in order to do this, we have to have charge being conserved. So let's go back here. What is the charge on my down quark? It's negative one third. But my charge on the up quark is positive two thirds. 
how on earth did I go from something with a negative charge turning into something with a positive charge? My charge must be balanced. So remember what this vertex is saying. This is what I had before. This is not a direction. It's what I have before and what I have after. I've got two things afterwards. So this thing, in order for us to have our charge balanced, it started off as negative one third. This is two thirds. I must have negative three over three because when I add these together, I will get negative one third or that's just the same as saying negative one. There is only one boson that will have a charge of minus one and that's the W minus boson. So this wavy line here, the boson that's given off when a down quark turns into an up quark will be W minus. Let me just show you. W minus with a charge of minus one. Here's my vertex. Afterwards, still charge of minus one, and this has a charge of zero. So my, my charge is still conserved. Let's try this with another example. I have a negative K on and it gives it to you. Remember, you do not need to memorize anything other than what a proton is and what a neutron is in terms of the quarks. In the IB, any of the other questions, they will have to give it to you or have to give you something so that you will know what it's made up of. K on is a very common meson that we use. It's made of an anti-up and a strange quark and it's going to be colliding with a stationary proton proton, right, that's going to be an up, up, down. And it's going to produce a positive k on, which is an up and an anti-strange, and a neutral k on, which is a down and anti-strange, and the omega minus. State and explain the interaction that's responsible for this event. Now, before you start to panic and say, oh my goodness, I can't draw a feminine diagram for this, and how is this going to work? stop, take a breath, and let's look a little closer. Now you might say first, well there's five different quarks here and over here, how on earth did I get seven? Well, do you remember in the previous example when I used the beta decay, I had the W plus ion breaking up into two different pieces. In this case, the W plus might break up into a beta positive and a neutrino. So it is possible that we could have had this with two other pieces. So don't worry too much about that. The bigger thing for you to look at right now is I had an S before and now I have an anti S, an anti S, two S's, three S's. I'm going to have the same strangeness value because you can see here I have a, a strange quark here. I have a strange and an anti-strange. They're really going to cancel each other out in terms of strangeness. So these two anti-strange will cancel out with these two strains, leaving with just strange. But in doing that, I see that I had only a single strange and now somehow out pop an anti-strange. So I definitely have quarks changing flavor. And the only thing that can change the flavor of the quark is a weak interaction. So I'm going to get a mark. All I've done here is state, stated that it's a weak interaction. For the second part, it says explain. Remember, I need to tell why. A quark has changed flavor. And if this is a two mark question, I'm done. That's all I need to do. Now I want to give you an example here of a feminine diagram. Notice that in this case my time is pointing up. There is no absolute rule about which direction, so please check every time there's a feminine diagram about which way time must be going. What does this mean? It means that before I have a proton and an electron and they interact because the proton here is giving off a boson to interact with my electron. What we've got here is called an electron capture. Now it says determine the particle involved. Let's double check. The easiest way to work with this is to look for charge first. My charge on the proton is positive one, and here on the neutron is zero. Well, that means that this little squiggle line must be taking away charge away from what used to be my proton. How much charge? 
positive 1. Well, there's only one boson that has a charge of positive 1. That's W+. Plus. Let's take a look over here. Here's my vertex before. Before I have an electron, negative, the W+, plus, positive 1, and together they will make neutral charge, and that's what's on my neutrino. So in this case, in order for me to conserve charge, I know that my boson must be a W positive boson. I've determined the exchange particle. Okay, example three. Give an example of an interaction which involves a Z0 boson. So this is a weak interaction. So what's some of the things that could cause a weak interaction? One of the most straightforward one is a quark changing flavor. Now in this case, because it's a Z0 boson, there is no charge. So what I need is I need a quark to change its flavor to one that has the same charge as it began with. So for example, if I have an up quark that charges two thirds, I could turn it into, let's say, a top quark. They're both real particles and they both have a charge of two thirds. And in order for this to happen, I need a wavy line here because a Z boson must be given off. There's no charge here because the quark, even though it's changing flavor, is not changing charge. So please read the success criteria one more time. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a better sense of what the weak interaction or the weak force is, and you can identify the interactions using some diagrams or using the equations given to you.